Committee on the Senate Committee on Local Government is hereby called to order. Secretariat, can you acknowledge the presence of our resource persons? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning. We would like to acknowledge our distinguished resource persons. We have uh, Representative Jose Enrique Joet S. Garcia from the 2nd District of Bataan, who is physically present. Thank you, sir. Representative Geraldine B. Roman, 1st District of the Province of Bataan. Governor Albert S. Garcia, Province of Bataan. Representing Secretary Eduardo M. Año of the DILG, we have Undersecretary Rico Judge Echeverri of the External and Legislative Affairs and Undersecretary Marjorie Halos-Hos of the Mindanao Affairs and Special Concerns. Representing Secretary Wendell Avisado from the Department of Budget and Management, we have Ms. Kathleen Pilapil of the a local Government and Regional Coordination Bureau, Budget and Management Specialist, as well as Mr. Mark James Evangelista. We have from the Department of Finance, Bureau of Local Governance Finance, representing Executive Director Nino Raymond B. Alvina, we have Mr. Percival B. Tome, Tax Specialist 2. From the DNRLMB, Representing Director Emeline Talabis, we have Attorney Kim Dariel P. Collis, Legal Division, and Ms. Sylvia Villalobos, Technical Assistant, as well as Engineer Janeline Werbo. From the Commission on Elections, representing Chairman Sharif M. Abbas, we have Director Jennifer Felipe uh, and Director uh, Davina Blas Perez. From the Philippine Statistics Authority, Representing Undersecretary Claire Dennis Mapa, we have Mr. Raul M. Ludovice, OIC Division Chief of the Population and Housing Census Division. From the League of Provinces of the Philippines, representing Governor Velasco, we have Ms. Angelica Sanchez, Director for Policy Development. We also have the representative of Mayor Luis Chavez Simpson of the League of Municipalities of the Philippines, Mayor Joseph Antonio Inton from the Municipality of Hermosa, Bataan. Representing Mayor Evilio Leonardo of the League of Cities of the Philippines, you have Ms. Veronica Hitosis, Executive Director. From the League of Venice, uh, also uh, Mayor Maria Angela S. Garcia, Chapter President, Province of Bataan. Uh, that's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Again, we, we reiterate the, the presence of uh, Senator Bato de la Rosa, uh, uh, Senator Amy Marcos, and uh, forthcoming will be Senator uh, Sherwin Gachalian. At the outset, the, the chair would like to acknowledge, again, the pres physical presence of Congressman Garcia. Uh, nandito po siya ngayon sa Senado. And uh, the, the presence of Congresswoman uh, Geraldine uh, Roman, as well as the Governor of Bataan. For consideration today is House Bill House Bill 8664. And uh, I have here in my possession a copy of a letter dated 25 January 2021 from Congressman uh, Jose Enrique Garcia III, Second District of Bataan, as well as Congresswoman Geraldine uh, Roman, but it refers to House Bill 199. This is the original bill uh, as filed. So the the issue at hand is the division of the third legislative district of Bataan into another uh, congressional district, which would result in the creation in in three legislative districts for the province of Bataan. We we are we were informed that uh, the division complied with the constitutional requirement of contiguous and compact territory as provided for by the Philippine Constitution. The remaining issue would be the number of population. So we will have to uh, refer later on to the Philippine Statistics Authority as well as the Commission on Elections. Before we proceed, 
May we ask uh, Senator De La Rosa if he has an opening statement. Uh, Senator, you have the floor. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just would like to manifest that uh, I am uh, fully supportive of all, of all the measures that we are being that uh, we are going to tackle this morning. Maraming salamat, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Senator De La Rosa. Nakalimutan siguro mabanggit ni Senator De La Rosa as former Chief of the Philippine National Police that the Provincial Police Office of Bataan is Cap General Tolentino. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Mr. Chairman. Nakalimutan. Uh, biro lang po yan, biro lang po yan. Sa, sa oran ni po yan, uh, Congressman, di ba? May, uh, bala nga, bala nga. Senator Marcos, you're recognized. Thank you, Senator De La Rosa. Thank you. Sa Senator Marcos? Nag Nagmumultitasking si Senator Marcos. May, may we ask uh, Senator, uh, Congressman, be having a a uh, PowerPoint presentation for his opening statement. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Good morning to uh, everyone, uh, to our chairperson, Francis Tolentino, to Senator uh, Bato, Senator uh, Aimee, all the resource persons, uh, our fellow public servants in the province of Bataan, Congresswoman uh, Geraldine, Governor Abbott, and our mayors uh, present. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank the committee, the Senate Committee on Local Government, uh, headed by Chairperson Francis uh, Tolentino, for uh, including into this committee the deliberation of uh, this House Bill 8664. Uh, personally, uh, Mr. Chair, this is very close to my heart because the origin, the this bill was drafted by my father, the former Congressman Ted Garcia, way back in 2013. Uh, we believe, and he. He saw it fit that uh, Bataan, given the growth of population from 1987 uh, to now, uh, which has uh, doubled, uh, will really benefit from the additional voice in the halls of Congress and, of course, the additional uh, support that will come from the national government on the creation of the third district. Um, I'd like to inform the committee uh, that uh, the composition of each district is different from the bill that I filed originally. Uh, this is after deliberation in the Committee on Local Government in the House and uh, discussion with uh, Congresswoman Geraldine. Of course, ideally, my uh, initial intent was to cover uh, the whole province. Now, that's why the title of the bill is the reapportionment of the province of Bataan into three legislative uh, districts. But I respect the views of uh, Congresswoman uh, Geraldine and her commitment uh, to eventually reapportion uh, her district, the first district, uh, in the near uh, future. Uh, regardless, Mr. Chair, of the comp composition, this representation uh, believes that uh, Bataan is qualified uh, for another district, and uh, this will greatly uh, benefit our uh, constituents. So thank you very much, uh, Chair Francis. Thank you, uh, uh, Congressman Garcia. We would like to... Uh, Request likewise, Congresswoman uh, Roman, nabanggit kanina ni, ni, ni Congressman Garcia, yung father niya as the original proponent of this measure. Uh, his father is also a good friend of mine. During my days as a Metro Manila chairman, uh, he used to give me some sound advices relative to the traffic situation in EDSA. And I, I distinctly remember that uh, I would go to his house and he would even show me a map on where to divert the traffic. So I, I, I am a good friend of your father. Likewise, I am a good friend of the father of uh, Congresswoman Geraldine. Uh, Congressman Tony Roman is my fraternity brad. So Cong Congresswoman uh, Geraldine Roman is likewise a, a good friend of mine. Uh, Congresswoman uh, Geraldine, you have the floor for your opening statement. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, uh, I would like, like to greet everyone present physically or by uh, on internet. I'm sorry because I'm hearing a, an echo right now. You're okay. You're, you're okay, Congresswoman. Perhaps uh, the other resource persons can unmute their uh, devices.
Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Good morning to everyone, to our dear senators, to my fellow representative, Congressman Joe Garcia, to our dear governor, Governor Abbott uh, Garcia, as well as the mayors present in this meeting this morning. I would just like to state for the record that I fully support the bill filed by my counterpart in the second district of Bataan in the hope that it will greatly benefit our province and our constituents. And I would also like to reiterate my uh, plan and my commitment in the future to divide our district as well. Hence, the, uh, uh, the approved uh, version from the lower house. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Congresswoman. That, that was really uh, sweet and short, but I, I will be asking you some questions later on. Uh, so, pwede po maghintay lang ng konti. And, and there is a, there is a uh, big possibility with, with uh, all due respect to the other resource persons present here that I will be having a, a this is, I can place this on the record, I'll be having a private Viber conference call with Congresswoman Roman together with my Senate colleagues. Uh, I, I'll, 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 I'm having that on record to sort out some some of the uh, perceived intricacies that I that, that I see in the present measure. Thank you, Congresswoman Roman. Uh, Governor Garcia, uh, may, may we hear your statement? I, I see you uh, now on screen. Good morning, sir. The floor. Yes, yes thank you very much. And good morning to uh, Chairman Tolentino, uh, Senator Bato de la Rosa, uh, Senator Aimee Marcos, and the rest of the uh, staff and members of the Commi Senate Committee on Local Government. To our representative, Kong Geraldine Roman, Kong Joyet Garcia, to our mayors, uh, headed by Mayor Gila, uh, our LMP president in Bataan, other guests uh, from the department, Secretary Anyo, Secretary Abusado, and to everyone present this morning, magandang magandang umaga po. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank our chairman, uh, Senator Francis Tolentino, for uh, allocating the time and uh, the effort to uh, deliberate House Bill Number 8664 in the uh, apportionment of the Congressional District in the province of Bataan. Uh, Mr. Chairman, there is a uh, phrase that goes, which says that uh, taxation without representation is tyranny. This is uh, uh, the words uttered by James Otis in about 1761 that reflected the resentment of the American colonists at being taxed by British Parliament to which they elected no representative. Although the situation is very much different in Bataan, we have outstanding uh, representation in the person of Congresswoman Geraldine Roman of the 1st District and Congressman Joy Garcia of the 2nd District. But through the years, the, as said by Kong Joy, the population of Bataan has grown tremendously. Um, the projection of the Philippine Statistics Authority of the current population in 2021, as projected by PSA, is around 840,000. Uh, and the ideal population per congressional district is 250,000. So kahit magaling po yung magulang, pero kung sobrang dami na ng anak, syempre kahit pa paano, mahihirapan po i-manage ito. Uh, that is why, uh, we are urging uh, our congressmen and now the, our uh, senators to uh, deliberate and hopefully facilitate the passage of House Bill uh, 8664. Uh, this uh, passage of this very important measure will add another seat on the national table where, where policy and decisions are made for the province of Bataan. An additional voice to ensure the interest of Bataan is protected and ensured. Uh, an additional opportunity to bring home to Bataan much needed funds and resources. Uh, Bataan is a province, although quite small, is contributory uh, to the national economy. Uh, we are a generator of power. We supply the power grid in Luzon. 
most of the the oil, the much needed oil, gasoline, diesel comes from Bataan, uh, having uh, host, uh, having uh, the, the, the only refinery uh, being hosted by the province, which is Petron, and a lot of oil depots all around the Bataan Peninsula. We also contribute to the food uh, being delivered to Metro Manila and the rest of the entire island of Luzon. Uh, through the years, we have seen additional congressional districts uh, created in the different provinces. Uh, in Cavite alone, where our chairman hails from, uh, through the years, several congressional districts were created. Uh, and the same goes for the rest of the provinces in Calabarzon, Central Luzon, uh, the entire island of Luzon, uh, Visayas, and Mindanao. So para makahabol po ang bataan and to ensure our uh, uh, contribution, not only to our people, but to the national economy, uh, again, we appeal to the Senate Committee on Local Government for, to facilitate the immediate passage of uh, House Bill 8664 uh, so that there will, there will be a just and proportional representation uh, in our country. So maraming salamat po for this opportunity, Mr. Chair. And once again, magandang umaga po sa mula. Thank you, Governor Garcia. Uh, for the record again, Governor Garcia is my favorite classmate from my Santa Monica, California days, <laughs> years ago. Uh, we were younger then. And, and probably, perhaps, uh, go, the gov good governor forgot to mention, uh, in, they have a position paper coming from Congressman uh, Garcia that the... Objective, objectives of, of the province of Bataan in the near future is geared, to, geared towards eco, ecotourism, industrialization, and agro-industrialization likewise. And perhaps we can make it of record that my district in Cavite will be connected to Bataan with the proposed uh, completion, construction of that bridge that would traverse uh, the seas from Naik all the way to Maribeles. And this will be another EDSA-type lane that would uh, cut short travel time from Bataan to Cavite. I think it will be reduced by, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 20 to 25 minutes. So from Cavite, you, you, you're going to reach Bataan. So yung Bataan at Cavite talaga magkasama po yan, not just as part of our history uh, during the World War II days, but as we look and move forward as a nation. Thank you, Governor Garcia. Uh, I'd like to place on alert the Commission on Elections. Nandiyan po ba si uh, Ch Chairman Sheriff Abbas? Chairman Abbas, are you there? Comelec? Sir, Is there a co Chairman. Yes. Can, I, can you identify Chairman, yourself? Yes. Si um, sino po yan? Chairman, I'm Attorney Jennifer Felipe, sir, from the Election and Barangay Affairs Department, currently acting yeah. Director 3 of the same department. Yes. So you are, you, you are representing Chairman Abbas? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Sir. Chairman Abbas was with me three days ago in uh, Mindanao when we tackled the Bangsamoro issue. So you are, uh, can, can we have your name again? Jennifer Felipe, your honor, Mr. Yes. Chairman. Uh, I, will, I will revert back to you. I will uh, uh, call you again, but I'll, I'm giving you a headway of 10 minutes to study the case of Aquino the Third versus Comelec, GR number 189793, dated April 7, 2010, a Supreme Court case having to do with redistricting. Can you can you study that for 10 minutes and ask your other uh, colleagues in the Comelec to study that likewise and aid you when I when this committee asks yes, you questions. Yes, uh, so we'll, we'll get back to you yes, Your Honor, but can you 10 to 15 minutes. Chapika? Sir, can, can you please repeat the GI number, sir? Yes, yeah, so Aquino the yes. Third, perhaps this is the former president, Aquino the Third versus Comelec, GR number 189-793, dated April 7, 2010, the date the promulgation by the Supreme Court. Okay, sir. Copy, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So we'll call you up. We'll call you again, and uh, your presentation should be 
lock in step with that Supreme Court decision. Thank you, Comelec. Uh, may, may we have the PSA, if they're around, the Philippine Statistics Authority? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, good morning. I, I would I would like to... Uh, can you identify yourself? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, good morning. Uh, I, I am uh, Raulo Duvisi, uh, representing uh, the National Statistician of the Philippine Statistics Authority. You are, you are the deputy of the PSA? No. Uh, I, I'm just uh, one of the uh, division... Uh, Division, uh, OIC of the Division of the PSA, at the Population and Housing Census Division, which is the one in charge of uh, population counts. Thank you. Uh, you. Do you have a presentation? Because I would like your presentation to be anchored on the constitutional requirement. Although the, the population requirement is not uh, clear so far as the Constitution is concerned, there is a requirement that the legislative district shall comprise, I'm quoting the Constitution, Section 5, Article 6, shall comprise as far as practicable, co continuous, compact, this is contiguous, not continuous, contiguous, compact, and adjacent territory. Each city with a population of at least 250,000 or each province shall have at least one representative. Uh, from the PSA, can you provide us information? What yeah. is the population of Bataan? in so far as the current legislative districts are concerned, this is on the 2015 population. Yes, yes sure. And I understand uh, you just have concluded a census a few months ago based yes. on your projected population for the proposed three congressional districts. You have the floor, uh, Mr. PSA. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Your Honor. Uh, uh, based on the 2015 census of population and census of population conducted by the PSA with August 1, uh, 2015 as reference date, uh, the population of, of, of the entire province of Bataan uh, so, is uh, 760,650. Uh, Mr. President, can I interrupt you? Do you have a presentation para mas maliwanag to, you, which you can share the screen? Uh, Actually, po, uh, I don't have. I'm just, I'm just reading po the uh, certification of population count, uh, the unsigned one, because uh, it is, it. Uh, we're, I'm still waiting for the signed uh, copy of the, of the present uh, of the certification of population count. So I'm just. Uh, Can you reading. do that slowly? Can you do that slowly, clearly, specifically with the numbers? Can yes, you repeat yes. that? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Go ahead. So based on the uh, 2015 census of population, uh, Bataan uh, had a population of uh, 760,650 uh, in 2015. 760,650 in 2015. And the population of the currently existing uh, first, first legislative district of Bataan is uh, 344,000. Uh, 221. 344-221. While that of the currently existing uh, second legislative district of Bataan, it's uh, 416,429. 416-429. Then based on this uh, legislative bill, uh, the population of the proposed, proposed first legislative district of Bataan it will be uh, 269,000. Sir, sir, can I interrupt you again? Yes, yes. Sir. You, you're, 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 the population that you are citing now, is that based on the 2015 census or the yes. 2021 projected census? It's still uh, the 2015 pa. It's still 2015, the 2015. So I would like you later on, for the information of the committee, to make a presentation vis-a-vis -vis the 2021 projected population. Okay. Is that clear? Uh, yes, 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 sure. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. So based on the uh, uh, 2015 census of population, the population of the proposed first legislative district of Bataan is 269,043. So it's 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 over uh, 200. 50,000 even uh, that using the 2015 census of population. For the 
population the proposed uh, second legislative district it's no 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 uh, P mr psa there we're talking of the 2015 so there is no proposed uh, second district it is still the current second district that you're okay. referring okay the, the first district Tama ba? Yeah. Can you correct me, uh, Congressman Garcia? Yeah. Mr. Chair, based on the uh, House approved version, the first district will remain the same. Then the second district, yun po yung mag uh, mari re apportion into two districts. Ah, okay. Go ahead, PSA. Okay. So the population of the proposed uh, second legislative district of Bataan will be uh, 239,998. But this is still based on the 2015. So uh, for for 2020, it is projected to reach uh, 263,000. Actually, it is projected to reach uh, 263,000. So again, it will be uh, way above the 250,000 uh, threshold. Uh, Mr. PSA, for, for the projected 2021 population census, mm -hmm. uh, relative to the proposed three districts, what is the population count? Okay, uh, I'm sorry, Your Honor, but we do not have projection for 2021, only for 2020. 2020, yeah. that can suffice. Yes, so, so for... Mr. Chair? Uh, 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 Congressman Garcia, would yeah. like Mr. to Chair, if I may, I think yung, uh, the composition that PSA is mentioning now is based on the original filed bill and not on the House approved uh, bill. So, uh, for the information of uh, the PSA, Mr. Chair, yung uh, House approved version which we are tackling today, uh, yung first district remains the same. So, it's still uh, six uh, towns uh, comprising of the first district. And then yung second district po, yung po yung ma ma divide into two, kaya tatlong bayan bawat district. Uh, Mr. Thank you, Congress Congressman Garcia. Mr. PSA, yes. you have in your possession a copy of uh, House Bill 8664, yeah. or do you have in your possession a copy of House Bill 199? Uh, actually, sir, uh, this uh, this uh, composition is based on we are uh, is based on uh, House Bill uh, one one nine. So so that's the old version. So if you have a Viber, we will send you uh, in two minutes a copy of the latest version, and we will we will give you another just like Comelec, we will give you another fifteen minutes to recorrect your figures, so that we are we, we are. Uh, on sync with what we are discussing. Otherwise, uh, you you will you are talking about something which is not being considered by this committee. Yes. We'll, se yes. we'll send you a copy of the uh, latest version of the bill. Okay. Yes. Yes. Pa. Apa, apa. Uh, pa. So you can you can uh, proceed later on. We'll call you back after uh, 15 or 20 minutes. Yes, sir. So we're sending it now. We're sending it now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, makas Can, can we have, uh, thank you, PSA, can we have, uh, uh, the Land Management Bureau, Director Talabis, um, Land Management Bureau. Good morning, good morning, Mr. Chair. I'm Engineer Verbo, I'm representing um, the, our director, Tony Emily Vitalabis. So, um, as per House Bill 864, po, hindi naman po required yung land area. And um, you, um, linat po namin, as per base map po, all the legislative districts po are contiguous. And we already sent them po an advance memo to DNR Region 3 for them to submit us the, the provincial base map of Bataan showing the proposed boundaries of different legislative districts. So, uh, engineer, there is no issue as to the contiguousness, compactness of the proposed legislative district. Walang problema doon? Yes, sir. But uh, you, you, you just stay put because uh, there might be a, a version which 
we are going to show Minter through a PowerPoint presentation as to a, a reconfigured uh, district. And we, again, would be asking your uh, expertise on this matter. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Engineer. Okay. May we call on the DILG while, while we give time to the COMELEC and uh, PSA to prepare their presentations. DILG, I saw Marjorie a while ago. Yes, sir. Good morning, Your Honor. Can you show your face, Mar Marjorie? Yes, sir. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, we cannot see your face because you're wearing a face mask. <laughs> Hello, Your Honor. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> any reaction, any comments uh, concerning this measure? ALG. Sir, may, can you repeat the concern, sir? Uh, the position of the DILG. For the BARM, sir? No, no. Uh, for, for Bataan. Oh, may I ask the USEC uh, RJ Echeverri, sir, for this concern? Yung, yung BARM sa next Wednesday pa yun. Okay. USEC Echeverri. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon uh, to the committee and to you, uh, Marjorie Halosos. Um, this is uh, Robert Echeverri. I'm representing the Undersecretary. Uh, morning, for our... Well, are you in a different yes, zone? Are you outside the country? Uh, no, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm, but I'm just on mobile, so unfortunately I cannot open my video, Mr. Chair. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chair, um, we will be uh, submitting our official position, but um, for the external and legislative affairs, we interpose no objection, nor do we raise any questions or further queries as to our uh, legislative agenda over Bataan, Mr. Chair. Thank you, DILG. C can we have the uh, COMELEC now? Are you ready, COMELEC? COMELEC? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, good morning again, Mr. Chairman. You're so you're ready now with the case? We hope so, sir. <laughs> we hope so, uh, sir. Uh, you have the floor. Uh, we will transfer you to OSG after this. Kung kanya katagaling. Okay, sir. Um, sir, with regard to the case of Senator Benigno Simeon C. Aquino III and Mayor Jesse Robredo versus Comelec, GR number 189793, April 7, 2010, it states the Supreme Court held, sir, that there is no specific provision in the Constitution that fixes a 250,000 minimum population that must compose a legislative district. As already mentioned, the petitioners rely on the second sentence of Section 5.3, Article 6 of the 1987 Constitution, coupled with what they perceive to be the intent of the framers of the Constitution to adopt a minimum population of 250,000 for each legislative district. The second sentence of Section 5, Paragraph 3, Article 6 of the Constitution succinctly Comelec, we cannot uh, hear you. C can you repeat that? Uh, you temporarily cut yourself. Okay. Comelec, can you can you re-enter the your the virtual Jesse, space? Yeah. Uh, Comelec, yeah, I'm sorry. Can, can, can you repeat that? Uh, I'm sorry, medyo nawala yung because we're having this transcribed. Uh, you ended okay. with the yes. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Again, in the in the case that I've mentioned earlier, the Supreme Court held that. There there is no specific provision in the Constitution that fixes a 250,000 minimum population that must compose a legislative district. The second sentence of Section 5, Paragraph 3, Article 6 of the Constitution succinctly provides each city with a population of at least 250,000 or each province 
shall have at least one representative. The provision draws a plain and clear distinction between the entitlement of a city to a district on one hand and the entitlement of a province to a district on the other. For while a province is entitled to at least a representative with nothing mentioned about population, a city must first meet a population minimum of 250,000 in order to be similarly situated. The use by the subject provision of a comma to separate the phrase, each city with a population of at least 250,000 from the phrase or each province point to no other conclusion than that the 250,000 minimum population is only required for a city but not for a province. Plainly read, Section 5, Paragraph 3 of the Constitution requires a 250,000 minimum population only for a city to be entitled to a representative but not so for a province. That it, that's it, Mr. Chairman, your honors. Yeah, one minute, but uh, I, to satisfy the uh, curiosity of this committee, may we require the Commission on Elections to submit in writing a legal opinion coming from your legal division office relative to the appropriateness of the Aquino versus Comelec case you just cited. And can you do that uh, yes, within the week? Yes, yes Mr. Chairman. And, sure, my and to, take, to take into consideration the questions that I will be asking you right now. Number one, if you're ready. From what you just cited and read, am I correct in the assumption for example, the province of Batanes has one congressional district. The province of Batanes right now has a population of 17,246, as, as per my records. If this committee, during this COVID period, decides, in coordination with the lower house, to divide the single district of Batanes into two. One district will be comprised of 5,000 population, and the other will be 12,246. Am I correct if I apply the case that you just cited, that it can be legally and constitutionally done? Your answer, Gomelec. And the same is true with the province of Sikihor. The population is 95,984. Can I divide that into two districts? One will be 45,984, and the other district will have a population of 50,000. The rest goes on with Biliran with 170,000, 171,612 population, and the same goes to is applicable like the Dinagat Islands, 127,151. Can this be done legally, uh, constitutionally? Come back. Your answer. Sir, based on the, the case of Benigno Aquino versus the Comelec that I just read, um, it is my personal opinion, sir, that this can be done legally. Because again, the minimum requirement of the 250 thousand population is not necessary for the creation of legislative districts in case of provinces but only in terms of cities but sir with regard to the official position paper we will submit sir an official position paper with regard to this including the answer to your question sir and uh, madam komilek I, I think you're having problems with your uh, connectivity uh, can you repeat that uh, ma'am Yes, po kayo. yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Can, can you repeat that? Mom, can you repeat that? Yes, yeah, sir. Um, uh, as I said, sir, uh, I think legally 
it's my personal opinion, sir, that we can actually really create uh, legislative districts for the province of Bataan and the others that you mentioned, Batanes, Sikihor, and so on and so forth, based on the decision uh, of the Supreme Court in the case of Benigno Aquino versus Comelec, sir. But um, uh, with regard to uh, your request, sir, for position paper, we will be uh, formally submitting the same, sir. Uh, to the to the first to the commission and bank for approval and then uh, submit the same to your office thereafter, sir. Ano katagal pa uyan, ma'am? So papa approve niyo pa sa sa end bank before releasing the position paper? Yes, sir. That's the that's the procedure, and, sir. In common, sir. How long, how long will it uh, take? We will we will make sure. How long Maybe, will it take? Sir, by, sir, the the commission and bank is um doing their session, sir, regular session every Wednesday, sir. So can it be submitted to you, sir, by Thursday? Yes, yes. Okay, yes, yes, yes. But I, I still have one question, okay, one follow-up question. Bear in, bear in yes. mind and try to research, these are leading questions, whether the Aquino versus Comele case is an unbanked decision or just a division decision. Study that. And my final question, which is not which is not really part of this committee hearing, and is likewise part of this committee hearing because it is close to my heart, having been a Metro Manila chairman before, is this. In Metro Manila, there is just one municipality. Yes, sir. Of all the 17 LGUs, there is just one municipality. The non-city is Pateros. That's right, sir. Metro Manila, Metro Manila is not a province. Under the Constitution, it is a special administrative region. Although Metro Manila receives an era similar to a province, it is not a province. So the situation for me, close to my heart, for Pateros, which can never be converted into a city, because the land area of Pateros is just 10 square kilometers and it is walking distance to BGC. It is walking distance to Makati. It is the only municipality with the lowest era in Metro Manila. My question is this. Can Pateros, based on the Supreme Court decision you just read and cited, be converted into a legislative district? <laughs> It doesn't have to comply with the 250,000 requirement of the Constitution in, in so far as the population is concerned. It can perhaps comply with the requirement of being part of a province, which is that juridical entity called Metro Manila receiving an internal revenue allot allotment, Madam Komilek. So which is which? Make that part of the position paper that you will be releasing. As, uh, as an obiter dictum, so to speak, so that we can be guided accordingly. Otherwise, kawawa naman yung pateros. Ang pateros, kilala na lang sa pagtitinda ng balot. Pero ang pateros, eh, may karapatan ding umunlad at magkaroon ng kinatawan dahil nasa Metro Manila siya. Walking distance nga sa BGC, walking distance sa, sa, sa Makati. And yet, it is treated like a third class, fourth class, even a fifth class municipality within Metro Manila. So make that part of your uh, assignment. But offhand, can you answer that? Can we create a legislative district for Pateros without complying with the 250,000 uh, minimum requirement for a city following the Supreme Court decision in Aquino versus Comelec? Sir, can I please refer you to our law department representative, Attorney Albert Rodriguez, sir? He's with us, sir. Ah, ano pala? Sige, sige. Sige, short answer lang. Curious, curious lang ako uh, for the education of this committee. Go ahead, yes, attorney. Sir. Attorney, ano yan? Attorney? Albert Rodriguez, sir. Attorney Albert Rodriguez, you're recognized. Um, good morning, Mr. Chair. Um, members of this committee, sir. Thank you po. Sir, um, this is just my personal opinion, sir, ano? But when it comes to the city of, uh, no, no, when it comes to Patero, sir, um, in my opinion, sir, I think it cannot be uh, converted into a legislative district. 
Sir, why? Number why? one, because, sir, because sir, the Constitution says that uh, if I may be allowed to read, sir, Section 5, Paragraph 3 of the Constitution says that each city with a population of at least 250,000 or each province shall have at least one representative. So yung problema po, pagkakaalam ko, um, ang pateros po ay municipality. So hindi po siya kasama, ang municipality po ay hindi kasama sa na-mention dito sa Article 5, Paragraph 3. Yes, na but again, I think you arrived, uh, with all due respect, Attorney, I think you arrived late. Uh, so pateros is part of Metro Manila. Is yes, Metro yes. Manila province? Is Metro Manila considered a province? Having, having no, been chairman sir. of Metro Manila before, uh, Metro Manila receives an internal revenue allotment and under the Constitution, it is treated as a special administrative region. So if, if Metro Manila is not a province, is Metro Manila yes, a city? Yes, sir. Is Metro Manila a municipality? No, sir. So what is, what no, sir. is Metro Manila? Sir, as you mentioned a while ago, sir, it is a special administrative region, uh, uh, region sir. So show me a legal justification that a, an administrative region cannot have a district representative when Metro Manila, I think, has more than 30 congressmen right now. Yes, sir. We will comply, sir. So make that part yes, of your sir. otherwise we will have a we will have a uh, conundrum here that will be depriving Pateros, which is not a city, can never become a city because of its land area, just 10 square kilometers, can never become a province because it is part of Metro Manila and will be forever be deprived of a congressional representative. Yung po yung tanong ko. Uh, bearing in mind Section 5, Article 6 of the 1987 Constitution. Now, going back to our topic, uh, we thank the COMELEC for their, uh, for their uh, citations and we will await your legal opinion by Thursday. We, got, we go back to PSA. PSA, are you ready? Thank you, Mr. Chair. PSA, is that PSA? Philippine Statistics Authority, are you ready? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, okay. Uh, can, ahead, I, can, I, can, I, can I share a uh, no? can I share a workshop? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, PSA. PSA, we're waiting. Can you describe what you are sharing us? Hello? Hello, sir. Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you, PSA. Okay, so, so, do you see uh, the, uh, the worksheet that I'm sharing on the screen? Yes, we can see it. Okay, okay. So, okay. Let me just finish this. Okay, so uh, based on that uh, 2015 census, uh, let me explain. Uh, the, the province of Bataan had, uh, 760, uh, had a population of 760,000, 650,000 in 2015. Uh, and uh, the breakdown of the population is here by uh, city municipality. Then the currently existing uh, legislative districts of, of Bataan are, are as follows. For the first legislative district, which is composed of Bukay, uh, Pinalupihan, Hermosa, Moro, Rani, and uh, Samal, uh, the population totaled to 344,221. Then uh, the currently existing uh, second legislative district, which is composed of uh, Bagak, uh, City of Balanga, then Limay and uh, Mariveles, and Orion and Pilar, 
a total to 416,429. So that's uh, those are the currently existing uh, legislative districts of uh, Bataan. In the proposed uh, uh, reapportionment of legislative districts in uh, Bataan uh, per House Bill number 8664, so it says here that the composition of of the first legislative district, the current uh, current uh, first legislative district uh, remains. Con Congress uh, PSA, Congressman Garcia, if you want to react, you can react. Uh, Congressman uh, Geraldine, if you want to react, you may uh, interject likewise. Go ahead, PSA. Okay. Uh, so, so if 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 if, if I am right, uh, so the first legislative district, the current the currently existing first legislative district, will be the same in the proposed. Uh, uh, House Bill as uh, 8664, so it will also be 344,221. However, in the second legislative district, in the proposed second legislative district per House Bill uh, 8664, it will be it will now be composed of uh, City of Balanga, then uh, Orion and Pilar, and the population will only be uh, 193,886. While the proposed third legislative district will be composed of uh, Bagap and uh, Limay and Mariveles, and the population will will be uh, two hundred twenty two thousand five hundred forty three. So it it's it appears that uh, the only the second legislative district will be divided into two. So basing alone on the totals for twenty fifteen, uh, four hundred sixteen thousand. So it's not a uh, 500,000, it's not even 500,000. So it's more likely that the population will indeed be uh, lower than the 250,000 uh, uh, threshold if, 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 if that will be the threshold uh, for a legislative district. So these are the, uh, these are the proposed, uh, these are the proposed uh, population for those two legislative districts. Mr. Chair. Congresswoman Geraldine. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, you recognize Congresswoman. Yes, I would just like to point out that the statistics being cited by our resource person is on 2015. Yes. Uh, so it has been six years. And rest assured that during the pandemic, many babies have been conceived and have been born. Number two, it has already been established by the previous resource person that uh, when it comes to the creation of legislative districts, the number of 250,000 is just oriented, it is not even specified as a sine qua non requisite. So really, unless we provide, uh, I don't know, I guess uh, these uh, figures are just uh, orientative and uh, definitely these are six years ago. So, uh, yun lang po, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Congresswoman. Tama, tama po yun, uh, Mr. PSA. Can, can we have your name again? Uh, PSA, Rep. Can you identify yourself again? Ito yung mahirap pag hindi face-to-face. -face, eh. PSA, are you still there? PSA? Para nawala. PSA? Yes, Your Honor, I'm still here. Can, can, you, can, you have your, can we have your name? Uh, I'm Raul Ludovicio from the Philippine Statistics Authority. Yes, Pop because... Population uh, and Housing Census Division. Yes, because... I have here in my possession a copy of the 2020 and 2021 major, major population projections coming from uh, Undersecretary Dennis Mapa yes. of the Na National Statistician and Civil Registrar General. So, yes. medyo, medyo iba nga naman tong figures niya sa ngayon sa sinabi ni Congresswoman Geraldine Roman, medyo mataas na talaga ito. Ang total hindi na 760,650 but the total is 836,077 for 2020 and the projected figure population for 2021 is 849,474. So malaking agwat na. So I think you have to readjust again your, your, your figures, uh, PSA. If you can see this, I have these uh, figures with me from uh, the Philippine Statistics Authority. So medyo luma na tong hawak mong datos, uh, Mr. Raul Ludovice. Yes. So you can perhaps uh, reconfigure that. Plus, yung sinasabi mong threshold, wala talagang threshold. Yung threshold na sinasabi mo para sa cities, 
Okay, okay. So pwede yan, halimbawa, i-convert natin itong uh, balanga into uh, separate legislative district, kailangan pumasok sa 250,000. But, but, if you want to convert the municipality of Dinalupihan into a separate legislative district, it doesn't have, it doesn't mean that they should have a 250,000 population threshold requirement. Even the 106,371 would suffice to convert Dinalupihan into a separate congressional district. Narinig mo yun, Congresswoman uh, Geraldine? Pwedeng ibukod yung Dinalupihan. I'm just, uh, I'm just uh, speaking out loud uh, as a reaction to the PSA uh, comment. Thank you, PSA. Thank you, P PSA. But provide this committee a copy of the updated version of the population projection based on the latest census. Kaya niyo po ba yun within this week? Actually, sir, uh, actually, the, the yes. yes, sir. Yes, sir. No. Actually, the uh, projection is being done by uh, another division. So, I will just coordinate with the division. Yes, isang, isang office lang naman kayo. Isang building yes, lang kayo. Yes, yes sir. No. I Where will, are you located like, right now? Quezon City, di ba? Yes, yes, sir. No. Okay, so we expect that uh, by Thursday. Can you have that by Thursday this week? Yes, yes, Your Honor. Signed by your uh, signed by your boss, huh? Well, uh, today is Wednesday. Uh, next week. Did that be next week, uh, Your Honor? Or oh, this week? Hindi ba kaya this week? Makapo kas. Yeah, but uh, the segment uh, we can we can prepare it today and uh, hopefully it will be signed uh, tomorrow. Oh, you you call me nga. Sa submit nila na Thursday. Eh. Yes. Mag mag maghihiring pa sila. So try to ano? Try to do that this week. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Thank, thank you, you Mr. Uh, Lud Ludo Ah, uh, thank you to the PSA. Okay. Uh, we'd like to recognize likewise the virtual presence of Senator Dick Gordon. Uh, we'd like to recognize. Uh, the LMP of Bataan as well as the ILG USEC Echeverry. Senator Gordon, if you're uh, going to make a statement, uh, this committee would like to recognize you. Senator Dick? Okay. Wala po si Senator Gordon. Uh, USEC Echeverry, to have a, an orderliness here. Uh, you want to add something? The LG? Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Hey, good morning, Mr. Chair. Sorry. Um, as regards your uh, query post earlier to the Comelec uh, on Aquino versus Comelec, um, the case is an end bank uh, decision, and um, it uh, establishes that uh, situation. Although I agree, Mr. Chair, it's a little absurd that a province does not need to comply with the constitutional requirements um, as regards population. Uh, and may constitute a legislative district so long as uh, it is a uh, provincial level LGU. Um, but for cities, they must comply strictly with the um, with the requirements set forth under the constitution and under the law. That is all, Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you, uh, the LG. Uh, next, next online is uh, the LMP of Bataan, Bataan chapter. Any statement from LMP Bataan? Uh, good morning po, uh, Senator Francis Valentino. This is Good morning, uh, Governor. Uh, good morning, po, uh, Senator. Senator uh, Aimee, Senator Bato, Senator um, Gordon, uh, all the national agencies, of course, uh, Congresswoman Geraldine, Congressman Joel, uh, Governor Abbott, and uh, other stakeholders. Uh, Senator Francis, uh, first of all, thank you for the invitation, and I'd like to thank you personally for being such um, a guiding advisor for LMP National during my um, time last term uh, as uh, I was a part of the Execom. Uh, you were really uh, an inspiration, and um, you really guided uh, us uh, during the time. Uh, for the information of everybody, uh, yesterday, we had a dialogue. The, all the mayors uh, had a dialogue with Congresswoman Geraldine and Congressman Joet with regards to House Bill uh, 8664. And we have, after that, we came up with a consensus. And if you would allow me, I read 
the position paper of LMP Bataan? Uh, uh, you, you, we're not requiring you to disclose the outcome of the dialogue. Uh, you have the right to remain silent. Uh, that might be confidential, but uh, later on, as, I, as the chair intimated, we'll be having a Viber, Viber conference uh, meeting with Congresswoman Geraldine and the other members of the Senate uh, in, 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 in a bit. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, next in line would be the LMP. LMP is done. The LCP, I, I think, you just submit your position paper. Is Governor Kua around? The ULAP? Uh, what about the League of Provinces? Good morning. It's, it's not, yeah, League of Provinces. Go ahead, go ahead. Yes, we have no objections to the passage of the bill uh, reapportioning the province of Bataan, Mr. Chair. That's just our statement. That would be all. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So no position paper? L LPP? No, wala. DBM. DBM and then uh, uh, the Department of Finance. Hello, sir. Ay, hello, Mr. Chair. This is Katrin Lapel po from the DBM. So far po, sir, um, our current position paper actually only took account the 2015 population census. So I have to um, defer po muna the position of the DBM. We have to update it as well as we have to have the legal opinion of the PAMELEC with regards to the GR number that you stated ago, um, the Aquino versus um, the COMELEC po. So we have to update our position paper for that, and as well as the projected um, um, population of the PSA, as since um, it has been done already, and kung waiting kung mapapasa ng apoy yung 2020 population census, then we have to take that into account. Um, we'll submit na lang po our position paper on that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. DBM, I have another question. DBM. Yes, Mr. Chair. So I, I, I think it's uh, really, it should be prudent and responsible on your part to have the latest population count, not just in so far as Bataan is concerned, but for the rest of the country. Uh, lahat ng probinsya, lahat ng lunsod, lahat ng munisipyo, sa kadahilanan na i-implement na malapit yung Mandanas ruling. You have to have that uh, count because the basis of the internal revenue allotment increase, upgrade, or so on to that Mandanas ruling will take into account the population. So kung kulang yung population ninyo, baka may problema tayo ng konti. So my, my request is for other purposes, get hold of that uh, population projection soonest so that we can have an equitable distribution of the internal revenue allotment based on that Mandanas ruling. Thank you, DBM. Uh, Department of Finance, BLGF, are you there? Ah, hindi nakapasok. So we now we now go to uh, land management bureau, which we required to uh, to submit. Uh, engineer, si engineer. Yes, you, sir. Yes. Are you ready now for your uh, calibrated position paper or pareho pa rin? Um, same po, same same, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, thank you. Can we have a, a, a short slide presentation? Uh, we, the committee is now taking notice of three uh, presentations, options submitted to this committee uh, relative to House Bill 8664. And the, the resource person should take into consideration the following options, although this is uh, in variance with the uh, House Bill 8664 which we are tackling right now. Option one. Can we have option one? Akala ko merong mapa. May mapa. Can we have that? Ah, wala. Can we, ha can we have that? Yung merong map? So, can you enlarge that? Can you confirm this, uh, Congressman? Pwedeng i-freeze doon sa mapa?
Pwedeng i-freeze doon sa mapa. Sige, go ahead. Dito pala matagal. Start with option 1. Mapa lang. Huwag na yung figures. Mapa lang. Mapa ng option 2. Mapa ng option 3. Can we have option 1? Yan. Can you enlarge that? So, Congress, Congressman Roman, Congress, you can confirm, and as well as Congressman Garcia, ito bang option 1? Ito yung nilalaman ng HB 8664? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. So, itong... Uh, can you still enlarge that para mas malaki? So, as shown on the map, District 2 will have... District 2 will have 239,000. Stop nyo na. Can you stop that? 239,998. District 3 will have 251,609. District 1 will have 269,043 based on the 2020 census. Am I correct? Okay. Congress? Oh, just yes. Uh, this, uh, this chart, this uh, map, actually presents the uh, original version, uh, which is House Bill uh, 199. And this is not House Bill 8664. So this is 199. Yes. So this is, this is, this is uh, option one. And so what is the... What is the version under uh, 8664? Option 3. Can you show option 3? Pasensya na kung gusto mo nagkamali-mali. Nilagay kasi option, option. So option 3, can you freeze that? Okay na, stop. So option 3, uh, is this clear that uh, under this option, District 2 would, would have 193,866. District 3 will have 222,534. District 1 will have 344,221 under the population projection census of 2020. Am I correct, Congressman Garcia? Mr. Chair, I believe this is based on 2015. That 2015? Uh, PSA. Yes, Mr. Chair. Kasi uh, as mentioned, I think, earlier by PSA, uh, District 1 has uh, 344. Tama po ba? Yes. Based on 2015 uh, PSA data. So, Secretariat, can you correct this? 2015 pa rin daw to? I'm sorry, nagkamali-mali na sila. So, can we have the 2020? So, walang mapa. Walang mapa yung ginawa dito sa, sa 2020 projections. I think you, you have to do that all over again. Oh, oh. Yung table na lang titignan. So walang mapa yung 2020. Dapat ginawa ng mapa yan para mas maliwanag. So sa 2020, ang lumalabas yung population ay 382 sa District 1, 382,263. Sa District 2, 210,741. And for District 3, what is the total? For District 3, what is the total? Wala? Uh, Mr. Chair, the total would be 156,670. Sa second page pala, 256,670. So as you can see, uh, from a an immediate cursory glance, the District 2 population can you stop? Huwag nang galawin. The district to population, if we rely on the uncorrected comment of the PSA, wherein they cited the 250,000 250, threshold requirement, is the smallest legislative district, 210,000. And uh, that probably is the reason why, why this committee is inclined to suspend uh, temporarily this hearing to confer with uh, Congresswoman Geraldine Roman as well as my other Senate colleagues through a Viber 
conference call, if you will uh, allow uh, Congressman Garcia. Congressman Roman, are you willing to do that? Of the record naman eh. Uh, yes, sir. So the committee is suspending the, the hearing uh, till the completion of the Viber conference call. Viber natin si Bato. Sige. Hindi, papa, di dial mo na rito. Ito na ang gamitin natin.
Senator Dick Gordon. And before that, we'd like to show our gratitude to Congresswoman uh, Geraldine Roman and Senator De La Rosa for uh, having that Viber conference call, although Senator De La Rosa was uh, relatively silent. Uh, Senator Gordon, you recognize? Kung wala pa, we'll have the uh, League of Municipalities of Bataan. I think they would want to be recognized and make a short presentation as well. We, we won't take long. Uh, LMP Bataan, you're recognized. Are you still there? Yes, Senator Francis, thank you very much. Go ahead, go ahead, uh, ma'am. At the outset, we manifest our full support and hereby strongly endorse the reapportionment of the province of Bataan into three legislative districts. However, ideally, it may be more equitable if the reapportionment considered all the constituent city and municipalities of the entire province instead of confining it only in the second legislative district. Hence, we actually uh, gave our full support in the original bill proposed reapportionment of House Bill 1995. Um, we believe that uh, with additional representation and equitable apportionment, the ratio of representatives to, citizen, to citizens become lower, resulting in increase of national fund allocation per citizen. The above observations notwithstanding, we join our incumbent representatives and all other stakeholders in endorsing the immediate approval of the proposed reapportionment. Uh, and we appreciate the consideration of our views in this legislative process. But we hope that uh, we and we respect and submit to the more informed judgment of the Honorable Committee in approving and a reapportionment that is constitutionally acceptable and will be best redound to the greater interest of our constituents. Again, uh, thank you for uh, Senator Francis. We have submitted this by email to both LMP National and uh, the Senate Local uh, Committee on Good Government. Thank you for Senator Francis. Thank you, uh, League of Municipalities of Bataan. Uh, now we... I was told that Senator Gordon uh, would like to make a statement. Senator Gordon, you're recognized. Senator Gordon, you're on mute. Senator Dick. While waiting for Senator Gordon, uh, Senator Aimi, would you like to make a statement? Senator Gordon, uh, you have the floor. Mahirap pag ano eh, online. Is the, is the Comelec still around? Comelec? Comelec? Sir, Are yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're yes. still here. Yes. Can, can yes, you, sir. can you uh, facilitate the issuance of the legal opinion? And to add one more thing in that legal opinion. Uh, this is now the third query coming from the chair. The first query was uh, relative to the population requirement vis-a-vis yes, -vis the, the Aquino Comelec ruling. Yes, sir. The second query, which, which is my rider query, is about Pateros. And the third is this. There is a constitutional provision requiring that a voter planning to run as a candidate must be a resident of that locality or district within a year prior to the elections my question is yes, uh, my question is how will this apply to a newly created district if it is applicable then we are now in a last two minutes uh, situation, uh, Madam Komilek, 
we're now on the last 10 meters of, one, of, of a 100 meter dash. So please answer that uh, query. And my personal query is that when can you submit soonest the legal opinion? Because the committee is also uh, raising against time, uh, Madam Komilek. Yes, sir. Um, with regard to the submission, sir, I mentioned earlier, sir, that we, we, we will be submitting it by Thursday next week. But actually, sir, um, I conferred with my colleagues from the law department. They said that they will prepare the position paper the soonest, sir. But again, it will be dependent on the COMELEC and bank when to approve it. But personally, sir, I'm going to discuss the matter with our executive director. So he will be making the representation to the end bank next Wednesday, sir. Yes, because we will be adjourning by March 24. And uh, we, we, yes, hope to, we, we hope to have that uh, document uh, prior to the adjournment yes, because, uh, you know, the, the process would would involve several readings and it, it will not be over in two weeks, uh, Madam Chair. So is it possible to have a copy of the legal opinion sans a, an, an N-Bank uh, approval? Pwede ba yun? Uh, mauna muna yung N-Bank, uh, yung, yung approval ng law division, yung document? Sir, I don't think that's possible, sir. I I, I really think, sir, that it will be the, uh, the approval of the end bank sir the the approval should come first before submitting the position paper to you so to make it the official position paper of the comelec sir i understand pero if you can do that uh, fast kasi naghahabol talaga tayo sa oras today is a uh, yes, march yes. march 3 and then monday is march uh, 8 and you expect to submit that by march 11 march um yes sir hopefully sir by march 11 I will I will discuss sir the matter with our executive director sir and explain to him sir the urgency of the submission of the position paper. Thank you ma'am, thank you ma'am. Uh, Senator Gordon are you now uh, Welcome, available? Thank you ma'am. Senator Gordon is recognized. So we'll give Senator Gordon uh, at least Two minutes, maghintay tayo two minutes, uh, session suspended for two minutes. This committee has uh, tackled all the relevant issues as we await the resolution coming from the Commission on Elections and Bank relative to the case of Comil uh, Aquino versus Comilec, uh, which has something to do with, with the 250,000 population requirement. And then we await likewise the paper coming from the, the Philippine Statistics Authority. And, and uh, after that, after the submission of the papers, the committee will be inclined to go on a technical working group to thresh out, of course, inviting some of our uh, resource persons to thresh out the, the uh, finer details of the reconfiguration of the districts uh, to be created. Thereafter, we will be submitting a committee report to the plenary. Hopefully, we, we will be able to meet the deadlines 
uh, prior to the adjournment of Congress. Uh, are there other uh, uh, points to be raised before we adjourn, uh, Congressman Roman or Cong Congressman uh, uh, Garcia? Cong Congressman uh, Roman, uh, narinig niyo po kami? Yes, po, sir. Uh, may I hear first from my uh, uh, colleague from the second district of Mataan. Congressman uh, Garcia, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. So um, after uh, your uh, discussion with uh, Congresswoman uh, Geraldine together with uh, Senator uh, Bato, uh, Congresswoman Geraldine and I uh, spoke also. And in the interest of, of course, the, uh, the province and the fact that uh, we want uh, this uh, creation of another district to be uh, effective uh, come uh, after the May 2022, I mean, during the May 2022 election, so that we can already uh, get the benefits of uh, another legislative uh, district. Um, if I may, uh, Congresswoman uh, Roman, uh, we've uh, decided to make it more uh, proportional uh, to include also parts of the first district in this uh, new legislative uh, district that will be created. And um, based on our discussion, uh, the composition will be changed, uh, Mr. Chair. So the first district will be uh, the municipalities of Hermosa, Orani, Samal, and Abukay. That is uh, the first district. The second district will be the city of Balanga, the municipality of Pilar, Orion, uh, Limay. And then the third district will be the municipalities of Mariveles, Bagak, Morong, and Dinalupihan. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Congresswoman uh, Geraldine. And uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to also manifest uh, our sincere um, gratitude uh, to Congresswoman uh, Geraldine Roman. Uh, I know she's uh, very close to her constituents in the whole first district, but um, in light of uh, the development that can happen because of uh, this reapportionment, even if uh, some of the towns she is currently um, leading will be separated on the, for this uh, new district, um, she agreed. Uh, so just so we have a more balanced and uh, equitable uh, distribution uh, of the towns within the uh, three districts in the province of Bataan. So it, it is with sincere uh, gratitude and, um, and uh, appreciation that uh, Congresswoman uh, Roman uh, agreed to a more uh, proportional uh, distribution and uh, we reload her um, understanding and also her um, her being one with uh, uh, the, the best interest of uh, the province of uh, Bataan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Congressman Garcia. We, we, we note all, all, all of the contents of your manifestation, but uh, the committee would be more inclined to have that submitted in writing, the, especially the the new composition that you mentioned a while ago. And uh, we, we recognize, likewise, the efforts of uh, Congressman, Congresswoman uh, Geraldine, uh, the sacrifice, the looking beyond uh, blurred divisions of boundaries uh, to include the, the assumption that Distinct boundaries would would be uh, would go beyond uh, the real essence of public service. So, Congresswoman uh, Geraldine, uh, you're recognized. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, definitely, it was not an easy decision. In fact, it is a painful and emotional decision for me because uh, my parents, uh, the late Tony Roman and mother, Nina Roman, have served the first district of Bataan since 1978. And uh, during this time, 
uh, relationships, deep relationships have formed uh, that go beyond politics and uh, that feed on the very essence of public service. But I think it behooves me to go beyond political considerations and to look at the greater good of our province. So it is with much pain, but uh, with hope at the same time uh, that I make this, this decision. Hope that my constituents uh, from the, the towns of Dinalupi and Marong will understand uh, my decision, our decision. And um, of course, even if uh, they do not uh, uh, belong to the first district, will not belong to the first district if this bill is approved. That doesn't mean that uh, we will stop, uh, as I said, uh, serving our, our, our people. Our home here in the town of Orani is, has always been open to any Bataenyo, whether from the first or second district, whether from our district or even uh, you know, nearby provinces, it has always been open. Uh, it will continue to, to remain open, just like our hearts will remain open. Uh, to the towns that will be affected by the redistricting. I just want to send a message to our political organization as well that uh, nothing will change basically when it comes to serving the people. But I do this uh, with the hope that uh, Bataan as a whole will gain much more with the third district. And uh, that being said, I, uh, I yield the floor again you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Congresswoman uh, Geraldine. I am very sure that my fraternity Brad, Congressman Tony, your father, is very proud of you uh, for having exercised that uh, sacrifice and solicitude for your constituents. You made your uh, father proud, my, my Brad, proud of your uh, recent action I, and, and to make this of record, redistricting is not just reapportioning of a political, geographical area. Redistricting is more than representation. Redistricting, if I, if I may add, redistricting is not just political. Redistricting is governance. Redistricting is a tool for development. And I think both representatives present now would agree that what they have done just now, carving out a, a new district, would mean well and augur well for more progress and development for the province of Bataan. And I join you there, Congresswoman uh, Geraldine and Congressman uh, Garcia. Ito pong ginawa natin ay makakatulong ng malaki sa kinabukasan ng lalawigan Ng Bataan. Now, having said that, the committee will form a technical working group while we await the resolution coming from the Commission on Election and Bank, perhaps next year, next, next week, not next year, next week, and the paper coming from the Philippine Statistics Authority. And after having called all the, the papers required, we will submit this to the plenary. So I thank all the resource persons present here, especially those who made uh, great strides and sacrifice in, in perfecting a, a, an acceptable uh, solution. And I do pray that the province of Bataan uh, will always be a pillar for good governance. So thank you, Congressman Garcia. Thank you, Congresswoman uh, Geraldine Roman. Thank you. Governor uh, Abed Garcia and all the resource persons present. Uh, thank you to, to my other colleagues. So without objection, this committee hearing is hereby adjourned.